Welcome to today's 5-minute lesson, which is on electron configuration. So essentially, uh, the study of chemistry has almost everything to do with uh, how electrons behave. And one of the really interesting things about electrons, in order to understand the energy um, uh, behavior of electrons, we have to understand the energy and how they're attracted to the nucleus of the atom, which is full of protons, the positively charged. Um, to make an analogy, I'm going to talk a little bit about gravity. So essentially, if you have something, anything, in a gravitational field like we are here on Earth, if you release it, if you're holding it in midair, like uh, they take this ball, and I release it, it will go where? Down, right? All things go downwards. There it goes. In chemistry, we say that this uh, item, this object, has what's called gravitational potential energy. Right? And so that potential energy means energy that is stored. It could be used by letting go. So if I let go, it'll drop. Um, in chemistry, understand the same thing happens with electrons. Now, for example, remember electrons are much smaller than protons and neutrons. Or they're much smaller than the nucleus. So um, if I release this electron, imagine now this is an electron, the nucleus is down there at the bottom. If I release it, where is it going to go? towards the nucleus, right? It'll really go towards the nucleus. It's releasing energy when it does that, right? And so the less energy the electron has, well, two things happen. First of all, it really, as it moves closer, it's releasing energy. And so moving these electrons into a stable configuration releases energy. And so just like if I drop this and I have to pick it up, I have to do work. I have to perform, had to exert energy on this to move it back up. When an electron reaches an atom, you have to exert energy to take it off, right? So the other thing to keep in mind as this moves downwards is that uh, the less energy it has, the fewer electron configurations it can occupy because there's different kinds of orbitals. There's a very simple orbital where it just is kind of moving around in a cloud, a simple cloud. It's called an S. And then there's more complicated orbital, but it needs to have more energy to occupy those orbitals. So an S orbital, S cloud, is just the simplest, the lowest energy. If you go all the way down to the lowest energy level, which is N equals 1, the first energy level, if it goes all the way down there, the only orbital it can occupy is S. And if it goes higher, there's an S orbital available, and there's also P orbitals available. Those are more fancy orbitals. Then if you're in the higher orbital, there's even fancier ones, like d orbitals and so forth. So that's key to understanding electron configuration, is the energy behavior of electrons. The electron configurations are basically, you see, you've seen them in this format before, 1s, 2s, 2, etc. You might have seen that somewhere. Uh, and maybe it was confusing and scary. Well, basically, the s, p, d, and f letters. Let me erase the little whiteboard here. s, p, d, f. Those are four different types of orbitals that an electron can occupy. Uh, they're thinking of them kind of like slots. And the higher energy is at, at the higher level. Sorry, so S is the lowest energy. There's a 1S, a 2S, a 3S, a 4S, etc. out to infinity. Um, but then P's are higher energy. They start at N equals 2, N being the energy level. Again, remember, if I, if I go back to here for a moment, if uh, the nucleus is down there, I'm dropping electrons towards it is they're releasing energy and so the least energy level is n equals one so coming back here n equals one that means i can only have an s n equals two there's an s and a p n equals three is an s p and a d and n equals four and onwards there's an s p d and f and the larger orbitals the higher energy level have more states available more slots so in fact s orbitals have one have one slot for two electrons uh, p orbitals have three slots, that's a total of six electrons, because each slot, each suborbital, each of these guys can hold two electrons. D is now we're up to five slots, and then F, now we're up to seven slots for a total of 14 electrons. One, three, five, seven. If this pattern seems familiar, that might have something to do with the periodic table. So the next lesson after this one is going to be how to read the periodic table and apply electron configuration to those.